Hi, nice to meet you all. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming and watching my film, <laughs> our film. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, if you say that we are already at the topic of the film, um, I heard that um, the film is not entirely fictional, it's based on your own experiences. So could you tell us a little bit about how the um, project came about? Yeah, sure. Uh, it started like 10 years ago, uh, and I think like it took a long time to make the film because it took me a long time to find a language that could narrate what I had lived between 11 to 18 years old and I decided to make this film because like I could not I, I was watching several films uh, that would like the subject would be anorexia and I could not recognize my own experience on everything that I was like watching um, and then like I started with this idea of okay I want to make a film about anorexia where I don't want to explain what is it but like offer an experience of about like what is being inside the mind of the character being inside the mind of someone who is like crossing anorexia and then like I started doing a research with several girls who were also like suffering from anorexia and then I, I started writing the film both from my own experience and my own intimate journals because when I was under this condition I was writing a lot so I brought all, all, all of that And like I developed this relationship with several girls and they also gave me their own intimate journals. And then the, the work of the screenplay, like the structure of the film and the, the life of the character is my life. But at the same time, like things, some scenes that are there are situations that I, I like we created together, like from other, other people like who live in anorexia. So... It's both. It's my it's my own experience and these other women experience. And uh, the film is also quite interesting in a formal way because you didn't choose to make uh, a documentary in the traditional sense, but also the film is not entirely fictional as a feature film. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more about your um, formal approach to the film? Sure. Yeah, I think it's part of like trying to find a language. Uh, to make this film and like I tried different approaches. I tried the idea of like direct cinema but I didn't want to produce a spectacle around anorexia and the direct cinema wasn't revealing like wasn't touching what I wanted to touch it's like when you're inside this condition at least my own experience it's like you are in this line in between reality and fiction and then like what we did is like we started building the film also in this line and like these two opposites like reality and and delirium i mean so that's that's one of the reasons that why we structured the film in this line between those two like yeah opposites fiction and reality and for me it's not like that it's really like made in this frontier because I could not like have one and not have have the other one. So it's really this idea of like when you are like here and when you go to a place where you are seeing things completely different from everyone. So I wanted to explore that a little bit. And also like anorexia is something that at least my experience is super intense, but at the same time is super virtual. Uh, so it's quite hard to capture that when you're like, for example, with direct cinema. And I didn't want to use interviews, for example. But I did have like a lot of connections with the canons of the documentary cinema. And to make this film, I had to kind of like abandon all of them and, and just try to hear what I wanted, like what the, the film was asking me. Uh, to do like yeah <laughs> hope i answered i don't know <laughs> um so um so the question was um the about the lighting of the film um she really liked your approach with the lighting and um, could you um tell us especially uh, referring to the delirium and could you explain it a little bit more um, how your approach was to the lighting of the film mm -hmm. yeah i think in the beginning of this film everything was about like 
uh, translating, creating images that could translate the feeling of the anorexia and almost like, uh, and also like we, what would be the concepts that could guide us on making the images in terms like how anorexia, you know, the idea of lines, for example, the idea of like contracts, contrast between a radical contrast that we have in this black and white part when we are filming Brasilia, that we are try, we try to reduce the city to the lines of the city. Uh, and this idea that it's also like what this girl is trying to make with her own body and almost like one is the mirror of the other. And also, of course, my, my own biograph biographical feeling of the city. But anyway, uh, Janice Davila, who is my GP, she was the first one to join this project. And from the beginning, we were like exploring how can we, like what kind of images uh, can, can narrate this experience. So this idea of like searching for a language was Janice and I since the, from the beginning. And like, even though I crossed like several years and several different, I tried, we tried different things during those 10 years. Uh, we were building all that together. And then at some point we understood that there is this feeling of uh, almost no color, uh, almost, and everything like, it's kind of like reality and dream at the, same, at the same time. And that's why we decided to, like on the color correction, not do a radical color correction and, and keep like the images in this like, uh, you know, in this like very light colors, um, like I forgot the name in English. I'm so sorry, the word in English. But anyway, uh, yeah, a little bit like that. And, um, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the second question was actually about the um, sound footage that you added, especially um, at the beginning of the film. We can see some. Um, protests and um, it was about when the dictatorship ended, uh, if that's correct. And could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, okay. My mom used to be, uh, she is, she used to be in, like before I was, even before I was born, uh, a leader for social movements. And like, I grew up in a world that I could not like separate intimacy and politics because that world was the world of uh, popular movements in the poor outskirts of Sao Paulo and like and there the way they made politics is really like a daily base and that means that my house was also a political com committee and so the way I grew up was really like at the same time experienced politics in several levels <laughs> like with the women of those movements that would come at my place like both to eat or to make parties and to discuss politics and by the other hand, when my mom became a representative, I was born when she was already a representative, but then, then we had this different experience of the power that was about Brasilia. But anyway, uh, the footage that we used are footage from the beginning, like the, the end of dictatorship in Brazil. And then there are pictures, I, I don't know if the person asked for about the moving images or the pictures that appears right after but the pictures that shows like social movements are pictures that those women took from the social movements. And the other images are like archive footage. And the picture of the woman pregnant in front of the horses, it's my mom and it's me in her, in her belly. So. so all of the other photos that we see in the film, are they also private photos of yours? Uh, depends <laughs> not only not only like some pictures are from mostly most of them are my own pictures but some of them are not so yeah if you're asking about the, the anorexic body the things like the trick is that i don't know if i'm allowed to talk much about that i can talk about the decision of showing the body because for a long time I didn't want it to show the body because for me, exactly what that would do is, is stop uh, people to, I don't know, it's very spectacular and it's very like you get captured by that image. 
and you for me what you do is like stop thinking about what's going on or stop only feeling the destruction but the thing is while you, you are in this condition and also this is one of the reasons for the like documentary and fiction in the film uh, you experience the reality in a way and you are not seeing what's going on with your body and the things like and you have an experience of the world that's an experience of beauty and ecstasy or at least the illusion of that it's a complex ecstasy because it's also an ecstasy where you don't have the other so you are outside your, your body but you then don't have the other but then um <laughs> uh, but then like i wanted to show okay if this woman is going in this like search for beauty in a way that's not becoming beauty but like being beauty like as it would be possible uh, we ha like i needed to show what she was doing with her body and for me there was no other way of besides like showing the body for for real so yeah and i tried to do that in a very like delicate manner in terms of like being like using silence um so yeah and i really stopped the film for those images to take place so um there was just a question incoming uh on in the chat and that was uh, why is the film called ecstasy <laughs> Okay, this is Patricia. Hello, Patricia. <laughs> uh, yeah, this idea of like being outside the body and uh, this feeling that we are like in anorexia, you, you really feel like you start feeling that you have uh, a lot of power because you do not depend on anyone that is around you because you don't even depend on them to eat. So the feeling of like omnipotence and this idea that you control your body and you control your life totally. Uh, and this idea that you can like, you determine what you eat or not eat and your rhythms and all that. Uh, it, it, it's such an empowerment that at some point we just like, and also that a, there is a feeling of like plenitude that's enormous. And also this, this idea that like for the, in the first years of my own experience with anorexia, my senses, they would become very like alive because I mean, it happens when you stop eating, the, all the other senses, they kind of like highlight, you can feel more the, the smells, you can feel more the taste, you, you, I don't know, everything becomes very, very sensorial in this experience. In the, like mostly in the beginning of that that was for me um, and this idea of like ecstasy is also how do you experience this experience like and how do you lose like yeah you go it's from the greek world so just like lose the connect connection with your own body not lose yeah you feel outside your own body but the things like it's a narcissistic ecstasy and not like a real ecstasy and in this idea that you are not dialoguing like you don't establish a connection with the outside world it's really something that like you divide yourself between mind and body and and then like it's the war happens there so what means to be outside the body in this condition like but anyway i i i'm happy that i didn't like pursue this idea of ecstasy forever because otherwise i would have really like died from anorexia and i think what saved me was like when it this feeling broke and and the reality came very strongly can i just say one thing before i didn't hear the whole question but anyway uh thank you for what you said about like the empathy that you felt towards the character uh, this was also one of the things that was in the beginning like and the reasons of, of making this film is that i could not communicate to people who were around me and doctors what i was living and this 
impossibility of communicating that drove me very suffocated and was one of the reasons I believe that why I took so long to get out of this condition. And for me, it was very important to make a film where the other person could at least touch a little bit what is going on with you and humanize this condition. So thank you. Um, so the question was also referring to the beginning of the film where we, where we can see the archival footage. And mm -hmm. there's the comment about uh, the mother being in the uh, 38th, 38th uh, week. Mm -hmm. and, and that the um, situation there impacted the adrenaline in, in the mother. And so the question was if that situation impacted the, um, the further life of the main character, is that correct? Yes, but uh, I have to this one detail was very, very impressive to me, uh, that the adrenaline was felt by or tasted by the fetus and it tasted bitter. Ah, yeah, that the uh, adrenaline was so tasted by the fetus and the adrenaline tasted bitter and if that affected the development of the main character? Yeah, I think it's essential and this is the first time that we talk about, it's very in the beginning, but it's the first time we talk about this relationship with, with food and how this character almost like what, like his mo her mother is fighting for life, but at the same time, this fight is also what some is also something that puts you at risk and then you start you try to refuse everything that comes into you but you can't because i mean i i believe that's life everything that comes it's at the same time good and bad and then you try like this little fit fetus try to, tries to avoid this like this nurture coming inside him but he can't because he's also starting to suffocate him. So he has to let go and have the true parts, the bitter part and like, and the air and the possibility of breathing. So inside the, the womb, of course, but, uh, and, and I think this is something that's going to be like in the whole film, because somehow the way I understand the character is she's searching for a food that could feed her. In the terms of Kafka, uh, the artist of hunger, that was one of the first literatures that I found that I found, okay, this guy is also talking about this condition of anorexia that can become very philosophical. But anyway, um, and, and yeah, so this very first experience is, is quite important. And of course, I don't know, we don't have how to know if that's true or not, like some, some therapeut, uh, therapists uh, and a doctor that, that I found they said that the baby can try to do that for real but I don't know I don't know if that's even possible but for me the most important thing is this feeling about like being inside the wound and receiving something that at the same time nurtures you that can kill you and how do you deal with that and how you're going to deal with that through your whole life um, yeah, and also what can, what can satisfy this girl? What kind of food like she's searching for? And certainly it's not about, I mean, there are several levels to answer this question, but the idea of like an idea of food uh, is also this idea of like beauty somehow. And the things like there is no perfect food. Um, and this woman tries to search for that a lot. So there is one dimension of that, that the perfection of food or if you want God or like, and the other uh, layer of that is the idea of like other kinds of food or the, or the kinds of nurture that's not about eating, but about love, about, uh, I don't know, reading things about Nurturing, nurturing you with other things. But of course, and there, there is something about the love between this girl and the mother that's super important. And this disconnection that happens there kind of reestablished when, like, towards the end of the film, when this girl can remake this connection, can reestablish this connection is when she can 
like at the end accept her condition, let go and start getting out and getting in touch with herself again. Um, I, I said several things, but I mean, thank you for the question. It's really, really, I mean, that, that was one of the first things I wrote uh, when we started writing like the screenplay properly, because for a long time we didn't have a proper screenplay. We had like ideas and feelings and journals and we would go to the location this started shooting things that could like translate that the experience of that body in those spaces because these spaces were spaces from my own biography uh, but when we started writing like a proper like i don't know a proper screenplay if you can say like that because this screenplay was made towards to the end like uh read and remade and written and rewritten towards the end but that was one of the first things that that like I wrote and put on the paper and yeah and that was also my biggest resistance because I know it's tricky to understand okay this very political layer uh the power and anorexia so how can you connect those things but this is the thing like in my life I cannot separate those things and and I try I started at least trying to understand, okay, I don't know if understanding must, but bring, bring to the film, what are those experiences and how I understand that all of that produced something that was anorexia for me, that was almost also a response to everything that was living around me and also almost a response to the power and saying, okay, you can control everything, but we are not controlling my own body. And this is also why it's tricky to, like, to cure, to heal something from anorexia, because you're not trying to kill yourself. You're trying to find a way of surviving. And yeah, if you don't understand that, it's hard to break that. Anyway, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the question was referring to, um, I already mentioned that the the isolation of the main character, but there is this one interaction with that person. And why did you choose this interaction to um, to break this uh, isolation of the main oh, character? Right. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question. Sorry, I didn't like. I wasn't understanding like what you wanted me to to talk about the, those that other moment. Yeah, the isolation is like for me was very strong, and this idea of like refusal of the world and really cut all kind of connections you have the, with the world, not only food, but affections and contacts. And you really, like I entered, and it's not uncommon, I entered this very abstract and virtual world of anorexia and my books and my ideas and mathematics and ge geometry and all that. Uh, and then what happened to me is that there is one moment in this process that is like I started, I, I cut all the contacts with the world and I started controlling all kind of desires that I felt like and I, I could, that was amazing also, this is part of the ecstasy because you, like, you don't feel desire anymore, you just feel plenty, you don't need anything to complete, you, you just have your, you, it's very narcissistic and that's a problem but anyway it's a huge pleasure when you're inside this condition. Uh, and then what happened that at some point, something broke inside me and I could not control my desire anymore. And of course, like this desire, like in the first thing is the contact, is affection. Uh, and I think like that moment when she breaks it in the film, is when she tried to she tried already going uh, to the extreme of her her anorexia. Uh, she almost died, and and now she's in this um, in this university, and she's trying to reconnect with the world without being able to yet. And then there is this kiss that happened. Okay, this kiss happened to me, and that was quite weird because I was in this party trying to find people, but then. Like, I don't know, I, I didn't know what to do with that case and that kind of affected me. But before that, had something had happened to me that I, I wake up in the middle of the night devouring 
the fridge, everything that I, I, I don't even know how did I wake up, but from that moment and on, like from that moment I started feeling hung, hunger again, like hungry again, I could not control anymore the idea of not eating because until that moment, not eating was something that was quite okay to me. And even I could say I didn't feel like hungry at all. But from that moment and on, when my body started wanting to eat something, I, I didn't have any, like, there, I could try to, like, convince myself, have other reasons in the world, but I couldn't control my desire anymore. And the thing is, like, I maybe I would love to make a second film or just, like, have more 20 minutes in this film, uh, when I, where I would narrate this moment of like getting out of anorexia uh, i couldn't for ser like serious i don't know many reasons uh but i also didn't want to end the film in the condition of anorexia even more in the world we are living in right now uh, and like open to this possibility of having contact with the other of like really break your own condition of isolation, narcissism, all of that was very important to me. Uh, and also this is what took me outside of anorexia. So I don't know if I answered your question. I, and, but anyway. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, yeah. There was another question by uh, Patricia. I don't know if you, if you saw it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is the world suffering of anorexia okay we have like that's funny because during the making of the film we had a group like my dp uh daniela the producer and some other people we we were making this film for 10 years okay so and we were discussing a lot what is anorexia what's not anorexia and how anorexia talks about our world where does this condition connect to our world and like and this question i think was in the i don't know on everyone's aim to make the film uh, of course this idea of humanize and of course also this idea of okay why what is this woman suffering that's so alien to people normally and that's a table taboo i don't know how it's in germany but in brazil it's a quite taboo nobody talks about it um and where where does it relate to all of us? What is the connection with all of us? And there is something that we understood at some point. Uh, that's this idea of alterity. You eliminate all, any kind of, like all kinds of contact with the other, because this is the way, I don't know, the others, he threatens, he, she, it threatens you a lot. And love is something that really disturbs you a lot. So the way I saw that for all those years was, well, okay, I would just eliminate my desire towards the other. I would just eliminate this alterity. And because it just like produces too much uh, confusion, confusion inside me. And I, can, I cannot deal with this idea of... And then what I did is like this, okay, like putting myself on the center instead of wanting the other and accepting how love shows you how incomplete you are and i think that's a quite universal experience and of course like if i think about the world nowadays and how do we like reduce contacts with different the different with the other and how we are always like closing frontiers and closing connections uh, i can think about a quite anorexic world as I would say, I don't know, the other day I, I said I, I, I said to someone, um, ah, okay, Antonioni's, uh, the clips, the clipsy, uh, yeah, it's a quite anorexic film in terms of this character. I wanted, I mean that they of this character who is, who cannot communicate to the world around her what her condition is. So, yeah, <laughs> Patricia. <laughs> You ask very difficult questions. <laughs> uh, just a comment. I would say it's the same situation in Germany that it's also considered a, a taboo. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so are there any more questions from the audience? If not, then um, I would have a final question. Um, something we didn't discuss so far is, well, we talked about the sound, but more about the voices, but I'm, uh, I was very uh, interested in the music, the use of music. That was one of the aspects that impressed me the most in your film, because you um, have an original soundtrack, but also you chose to use some classical music, and then you also have the song by Lickie Lee and David Lynch. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your approach to selecting the music for the film? Yes. <laughs> First of all, I think, I really believe as a filmmaker that the film shows you what you have to do, almost always. And it's just impressive how do you try things and the film rejects or accept things. Okay, sound was in the very beginning, like after starting making the films, or the, the images, sound was the very like thing that, that followed. And from the beginning with Cecile Chagnon, that's a French uh, sound designer, uh, we like she started wa like seeing some watching some images that we are producing some sequences we we're editing and she started proposing sounds from also what I would tell her what my experience was and like she did that during I don't know two weeks and then we sat to like we when we sit down together and we start creating the sound design in the early stages of making the film so the sound is present in the film from the there is no editing and then making the sound. There is editing and making the sound. Image and sound goes together all the time. And then like, and also shooting, like I wasn't, I didn't film everything and then I went to edit. No, I was editing, doing sound design, uh, filming things, going back to the editing room. So there was a very organic process. Uh, and in the sense also we could listen to what the film would ask us for. And then something about uh, when I understood, there is one thing that I understood at some point as, okay, what's the genre? Uh, what, ki what kind of music would most approach this feeling of anorexia? And then it came an electronic uh, music because of the repetition, but also because they lacked electricity in that. Um, but also like this girl is growing up and she's dealing with all the references in, in this world. So we're, we start playing with like all those cliches also with which this girl relates to like the vows. Okay, it's a beautiful vows, but it's quite like... <laughs> uh, so we start, we try to understand the music in the different moments of her life, like what would be around her, but also that related to her inner state, inner mind. Uh, and then at some point, like I found Likesley uh, music. And this is the only one that has like um, a lyrics. And then I started researching about like uh, Likesley and like she had anorexia. And that was just impressive because this lyric could also describe a very important moment of this whole process. Uh, and then I decided to compose this disco, uh, mu this disco situation, where we have this music that also was comp composed by a, ger a German composer, David. I cannot pronounce his second name, but I can send to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, David composed one of the layers that was techno, and then we had like likely music. Uh, on the other layers. So what happens, this conflict between the techno that's happening around her and this likely music that's happening, likely music that happened inside her mind. So this conflict between those two things uh, translates the conflict she has with this world around her too. Uh, and yeah, I think like music and rhythms was something quite important. Uh, somehow like I think I reduced myself to rhythms at some point. Uh, and it was very mathematical, everything, and in this sense, was quite musical. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your very interesting and inspiring replies. And uh, thank you also to our audience for um, adding the questions. I would like to do one more uh, yeah, impression of the audience. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Bye. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> oh, thank you again for having me. Thank you for watching the film, and that was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.